Welcome back to Undercover. We are here with Mr. A to Z himself, Jason <laughs> Moraz. See, I see what you did there with that title. That's all really clever. Yes, it is. Stuff. Now, uh, you've had your, your, not really your second album, but your second major album. Yeah, second studio record. Uh, Mr. A to Z. It's been out for a little while now. Mm -hmm. it's, it's very diverse. Cool. Everything that you have on. Mm -hmm. Were you trying to create an album that just fit fit everything in? Um, yes and no. I mean, what happens when I'm working on a record? I mean, I've only made two, you know? And so, to be honest with you, my goal when I make a record is to make the record, is to get it done, you know? And it's through the process that all this variety shows up because when I write a song, I usually write for the stage first. Like, how is this going to feel to play this on stage? How is this going to fit into the show, into the into the whole body of work, not just for the record. You know, so I'm writing songs that are full of variety for a show, and then what happens when it comes time to go into the studio, you've got a variety of songs, and basically I just kind of choose a set list. And to me, 12 songs is my favorite number of songs to be on a, on a record. You know, six on side A, six on side B, and you're done, no more, no less. And uh, so in the recording process, I'm looking at this body of new songs, and I just kind of choose you know, which 12 are going to make an interesting variety to, to introduce to the body of work, you know? And I've, I've yet to get to a place as a writer where I can say, this is the kind of record I'm going to make, and it's going to include this, 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 and it's going to be called this, you know? I never really know what I'm getting myself into when I go into the studio. So do you still look at it as having a side A and a side B, even though... Well, you know, I do, and, I, and I think a lot of artists do as well. You always know what you're going to start with, and you always know what you're going to end with. You can ask anybody before they make the record. Mm -hmm. They will tell you that. Well, I know what I want to start with, and I know how I want it to end. And so everything else is kind of filling in the spaces. And, and there's definitely a middle point, you know. I mean, it's hard to look at it inside A and side B because a lot of people don't even know what you're talking about these days, mm -hmm. you know, because certainly it doesn't do anything with cassettes, you know, and, and the few vinyl that does come out nowadays doesn't really support the average LP, you know. Even, uh, you know, how do you feel about the mp3 generation which is kind of doing away with with having an album full stop and absolutely it's just like releasing 12 singles absolutely you know uh, and i've even been approached by by different members of the label saying you know if there's ever a song that you just want to put out there you don't have to wait for an album you know he says back in the day we'd listen to we'd have to wait two years before we hear a new led zeppelin song you know nowadays if led zeppelin want to put a song out you know they mm -hmm. could put the song out, and then within the next day from recording it, it could be online. You know, and I think that's an amazing thing. And more and more people are starting to mix for MP3 compression these days because audio files know there is a difference. You know, and I think that's bizarre, but it's evolution. It's evolution of music. It's part of the evolution of man. Yeah. You know, with the song "Mr. Curiosity." Okay. Where did those operatic vocals come from? Yeah, that. Yeah. You know, I, to be honest with you, I think the first time I ever did those operatic vocals was at the Royal Albert is, Hall. Is that you singing Yeah, that? yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, we, we had a gig opening for Tracy Chapman three nights at the Royal Albert Hall in London. And it was just magnificent, you know, this massive opera house, you know. And uh, I don't know what happened. It just came over me just to play with these kind of sounds up in my head and up in this room. It's, it's, more, it's a parlor trick, mm. you know what I mean? And so it was something I, I would do at the live shows and I swore I'd never record it because it just doesn't have the same effect. But during the recording process, you know, we'd, we'd had this instrumental in the middle of Mr. Curiosity, you know, and I just busted it out to fill the space, you know, and, and it just would make everyone in the studio laugh and Lily White loved it and we decided, heck, let's just keep it in, you know? So. Yes. I, th I can't believe that's actually you. Yeah. I thought it was a girl. No, no, I <laughs> have a tendency to be either gender. Yeah. I can do that. Well, there you go. That's why. That's how I can cross my legs a lot easier than you can. So yeah. You have the typical male crossing yeah, where you leave a little space. <laughs> See, I don't have any. I don't have any reason to. <laughs> that's also my type. Yeah, it's gene, okay. So. <laughs> yeah, type gene. Anyway, thanks for coming in. Um, that, another different one on the album. There, there are a whole bunch of yeah, different, different tracks on the tracks. album. Though, those, but uh, Bella Luna. Okay. You've got like a little bit of a samba going on. Yeah, something a little saucy. Where did that come from? 
it just came from me wanting to try that, you know? It has nothing to do with me being fluent in that particular language of salsa, samba, rumba, merengue, all that fantastic, those fantastic rhythms from Latin music. Um, but I wanted to try it. I wanted to see what it was like, you know? And I'm, it just is what happened. I, I began on, on the beach one night I'd challenging myself to see if I could write a song about the moon, thinking it, it would be incredibly cliched and overdone you know, but about 45 minutes into the process, I just was loving it. I felt this is really beautiful, you know, and I'd never, never really played anything like this before. So out it came, you know, and I thought this would be great to, again, add to the live show. It'll be a nice twist into the show. And of course, it made it on the record because it was something refreshing, I think, in the middle of the record. It's pretty it amazing up. that you can actually just pull it off like that. Yeah, just kind it's of quite go, interesting. Yep, all right, I'm, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do yeah, this. Yeah, I'm going to try this, you know? Because as a performer, I want to know what that feels like. You know, I love all kinds of music. You know, I listen to Willie Nelson songs. I'm like, I want to know what that feels like to get, to get hillbilly and get Americana, you know? Yeah. Or when I listen to, a, you know, an intelligent rap song, I think, gosh, I wonder what that feels like to be caught in the moment, just letting your lyrics just keep spitting and all the things that you've written and blah, 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 blah. I want to know what that feels like, you know, so I, I, I try it. I try to write rap songs, you know. You actually did a little bit of freestyle rapping earlier on. Is that true? Absolutely. Or, yeah. yeah. And when I get back to the States, the, one of my, my, I call him my writing partner. He's like my sparring buddy. You know, when I'm home, we put on, you know, our favorite instrumentals and we just, we, we tell stories to each other. You know, I, like I've been gone for three months, so I'll tell him what I've been up to for the last three months. That's, that's a... So that's a sea of information, you know, mm -hmm. of, of material. And so what I'll do, I'll we'll throw on some instrumental music and I'll just flow to him what I've been doing and he'll fire right back to me. Oh yeah, well I've been doing this and that and the other and blah, blah, blah. And that's it's an album way, right there. Exactly. <laughs> and you know, we, we do kind of hope to someday do something like that, but it's a way for us to constantly keep practicing our skills and, and, and just feel good. It's a, it's a creative expression, you know, no different than yoga or you know, learning martial arts or something. And people out there probably wouldn't even listen to a Jason Raz album and think, oh, I bet he does freestyle rapping when he gets home. Exactly, yeah, that's how he likes to unwind. He likes <laughs> to freestyle rap <laughs> in his ghetto. Now, you started out playing at a place called Java Joe's. Yes. Uh, and I believe you, every now and then, still go back to Java Joe's. Well, I do. Uh, you know, it's funny because coffee shops nowadays are just called Java Joe's, it seems. Joe's, unfortunately, the original Joe's closed down, um, sadly, about three years ago. But I do know that Joe is searching for a new Joe's. And, uh, and hopefully, on my long period of time at home, I can help him find one. Uh, but there are other coffee shops in San Diego that I frequent, places called Twigs, Lestats. You know, they have any old, any old name. So what's it like when you just go through shows? and... Um, well, and, uh, I don't announce that I'm going to be playing because we've tried that before. Oh, Jason's going to go down and play. And it's just crazy packed. Kind of, yeah. And the coffee shop owners will open the doors to as many people as they can. And it's, it's just too uncomfortable. And it's, it's not true to the coffee shop setting. So my bro, my sparring partner, you know, Bushwalla, he goes down and he plays regularly, so if I'm in town and he's doing a show, I sneak in and I'm his support or we'll back and forth between songs. And it's just a chance for me to, to, to test new material or do something, you know, just, just to be what I used to be in the coffee shops, mm. you know, and I was just one of the many people down there. And on those nights, there's no hype, there's no cameras, there's no, you know, autographs. It's, it's the real people. It's my friends that have been there for years. and who still, you know, respect me as, you know, someone who did come from the coffee shops and someone who's still that guy. You know, it's just that I've had an opportunity to go off and do these other things, say down here in Australia, for instance. Mm. Um, and they're excited, you know, they're like, wow, what have you been up to, you know? And they're excited to hear about it, but they still treat me as a regular and I, that's why I continue to go back. I think the day that it changes is the day that I'll probably have to look for something else.